made it. It's Rock Island Grand Prix. This is turn five, day before the race. This is what it looks like. tour around the track and you can kind of see what your see what everything looks like during the daytime before the races. Randy just went around the corner. So you can see they're getting ready to stage all this, dropping off the barrels and the fencing. I think every year we come by that play play uh, place over there and whatever the heck it's called. I always think there's somebody sitting up there on that little awning that they got there. But we're coming up on uh, turn four. So this is turn four during the daytime before the race. And I think that's the federal courthouse there if I remember right. This is the only right-hand turn they got. So here's turn three. Day before. And uh, this is always a tight little turn because you're, you're coming off those two long straightaways and you come into this one and it doesn't have a lot of grip, or at least it hasn't had a lot of grip in other years especially in the vintage stuff. And they push the barrier out a little bit there on the other yeah. side. Yeah, right there. So, the... so it's kind of a tight corner, and I've seen more than one guy lose a spindle on that. The corner is second and 19th. So every once in a while, people will clip the barrier and stuff. Which immediately sends you into the outside wall. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to be over there. But, yeah, this is... They'll they'll line up a lot of safety stuff. A lot of fan, a lot of spectators like this back back area too. It's a good place to watch races. Yeah, they love to set up down there on turn. So uh, here we are. It's a turn two. You can go two blocks down. It's turn one. A lot of people crash through here. Two back to back, two block straightaways, pretty fast. And there's a big hump right in there, in the middle of it. That if you're not paying attention, you could care, catch some error there if you run down the center of it. And then head down to turn three. This is in between turn one and two. It's the, used to be a painted symbol in there for Rock Island. I don't know exactly what it was, but um, there are spots in this that you're running full width of the street too, by the way. But um, there's a couple little spots in there that'll launch you pretty good if you're not paying attention. It's a little wider than some street race events, so come to Rock Island and run. And here's turn one. Right where the U-Haul truck is. Long Off ways up there to turn two. Yeah, long ways up to two. So this part of the the course, it's inside the track that you don't normally see. All the buildings and stuff. You know, it's pretty tall buildings in there. We run, nice echo chamber. Yeah, it's a big echo chamber. And this is in between turn one and two, or uh, turn six and turn one. And it's a long ways down. So here's turn six. 
This is also the pit grid and, and all that sort of thing. And six usually collects people too, once in a while. And long ways down there in turn one. Two blocks in turn one. So yeah, there's two blocks all the way down there. We got the cop car rolling by right now. So yeah, you carry a lot of speed. You get down to turn one, and you turn turn left at turn one and you go two down, down, blocks down there, down there where those silver cars are the one with the one way, headlight way way down there so yeah margay's down here these are all the branded pits and stuff um, pretty heavy presence of margay And they should. I mean, it's basically in their backyard, one of the bigger events. They should be here. So. This will fill up pretty fast over here. Yeah, just a few ignites here. Rock Island, Illinois. Rock Island Grand Prix. 7.38 on a Friday night. A lot of trailers rolled in. Getting all set up. Attendance is down a little bit this year, but this is typical of a COVID situation. Some people don't come, won't come, whatever. But, you know, at the end of the day, we're here to have a good time. We're here to put on a good show. Got the specified fuel trailer over here. People buying their fuel. Walk on down through, they close the city streets off for us. Downtown Rock Island. set up, lights on, working on carts. We got to get up early in the morning. Hopefully it's not raining. We can get our stuff ready to go. But if it's raining, we're not running. The rest of these guys will be running because they got rain tires. We don't do rain tires on the vintage carts. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Who's your tire? That's their rig here. How we doing, guys? Who's your tires? Nothing but the best. Got to have all the porta potties. We're headed down to where the starting grid will be. And down here they got all these barriers they got to put in place. A lot of work for the people. Yeah, there's a lot of work. That's kind of like the Yogi Bear thing. Hey, boo -boo. How are we doing? Who yeah, has your favorite bear? This will end up being the starting grid down here. There's the food, food trailer. We're already well on their way to setting everything up. Are you having fun? Absolutely. I knew that. There you go. <laughs> so they've already got this stuff unloaded out of the trucks. Forklift, bring bring all these all these uh, barriers in in semis. I got the trees and stuff here lined with bags in case somebody unfortunately makes a mistake. So we're walking the track backwards. What's that, turn six there? 
That was turn six back there. That yeah, was turn Coming six. We're, we're headed up here to five. So they didn't waste much time getting these out here. I was talking to our buddy Randy. He said, surprisingly, they had uh, more help than they anticipated. Because earlier we came through with cell phone, and of course none of this fencing is up. You know, they had barrels sitting here. This was all rolled into rolls. And now this fencing's going up all the way around here to keep the crowd out. This is a fast corner where there's a lot of action, so, you know, they got double barriers here. And you go over there, you can still see the, the fencing rolled up. They haven't done the interior fencing. They haven't done, from turn five down to turn four, they haven't done that fencing yet either on the outside, but they'll get it done. Busy working. Here comes our hero, Randy. Yeah. Busy working. He's busy. And thank you, Randy Duncoff, for coming out here and putting all this stuff up for us. I know you did it all by yourself, so there you go. You're going to get all the credit. All right. I like it. Yep. The only guy over on this side, so. Hi, it's Christina on HGTV. Oh, no, it's her lookalike. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. How's Yeah, just fine. <laughs> So in case everybody hasn't figured this out, you know, this is just like Street Outlaws. She's run downloading all the race tune for all the carts tonight. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm yeah. at it. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. She's almost the Michelin man with, with the tires on her arms, but yeah. All right. up the fencing for the starting grid. They're keeping us safe, and by the way, Chief, they're on duty, so that's good. Yep. Yeah, we're getting down here to where the, the tents are. Down here to the Margay tents. Getting everything set up to the, the, the big Margay Ignite tent. Just right down there. It looks like it's closed down for the evening. Uh, these guys over here. Hard work in this tent. Full laughing going on, so they're not all working hard. Some of them are having fun. Guys over here, want a little midnight oil. Our trailers over here, with all lit up with the generators, people working, and all the stuff ready. Nielsen's. Looks like Cliff went mountain man this year. Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's got the full-on beard going. Yeah. Tony's not got no hair, but Cliff's got it all. Absolutely. Well, there you go. That's, that's that. Got that settled.
Hi guys. So all change come morning. And there'll still be people coming in tomorrow morning too. down a block from the starting grid from turn six we still, we still got a block to go to get down here to turn one it's two block long straightaway 90 degree corner at the end you can see all this transformation with the barrels and the fencing to keep the crowd out Yeah, keep the broken go-kart pieces in, people out. Lots more barriers to put up, yeah. Yeah, I got a long ways to go on barriers. It's a lot of tugging and pulling. I'll come down through here about six, seven carts wide on the uh, 206 class. to do a Le Mans start, push start. And then they'll funnel down to about usually three, two to three carts wide through the corner. Yeah, you get down here, you'll see why they, why they funnel down. Well, here we go, guys. This is how they move this stuff around. Now it's done. course actually runs the opposite direction. Oh, that's the forklift. Well, they just offloaded all of this. Okay, with the semi, yeah, he's, he's good. You the man, you the man. Like I said, a lot of pushing, shoving. Got the kids working. No video games for them tonight. They'll be tired when they go home. Yep, you got to link them together. So the, That's an expert right there. So the kid, kids dri driving those plugs down in there. One, one's putting the plug in place. Yeah, I couldn't do that. I couldn't even stand on that one. One's putting the plug in place, the other one comes in, stomps them down, and link them together. Yep, there you go. Nice job, boys. Good job, boys. So they got a lot of barriers here that they do that. Oh my God. Kid's working on his leg muscles. He'll be stiff in the morning. Yeah, he's a kid. Maybe not. Well, this is the next two blocks straight away. So we're in the first block of this. So if you're in a, a go-kart with a ton of torque, like a, a 206 has got, doesn't have a ton of horsepower, but got a ton of torque pulls tall gear you know they're hauling down through here now you get into the two strokes and the shifters you know these shifter guys are gonna be running 80 mile an hour down here uh, our vintage carts um, we'll see 70 70 with the fast ones see 60 mile an hour with the other carts get down here on this intersection with the twin twin engine will actually catch a little bit of air going across it and I'll actually burp the throttle just a little bit. Yeah there's a there's a little hump right here in the middle. If you run down the middle of this street 
you're going to catch this hump. It'll, it'll actually give you a little bit of air. Good chance you're going to over rev your motor. Could do some damage. You got to run to the right. You got to run to the left. You got to come down here a few times to know that. But after you figure it out, you don't want to forget it. Definitely don't want to go down to center. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Street's plenty wide. You know, we kind of covered this this morning. Uh, even even with all the barriers and where they put the barriers, unlike some street races, this is pretty wide. Now, you, you kind of get down to running lines on here, but still, I mean, for the most part, for a street race, it's a pretty safe street race because of the width of the actual course and the amount of barriers they put up. Hi! Say you're, hi. you're on camera! So they got the job of putting up all the banners, so you know, there's just all kinds of jobs you can have if you want to volunteer down here at the Rock Island Grand Prix. We have, I volunteered for over 20 years. There you go, and I thank you for that, because without we your help, we wouldn't be doing this. And at this point in my life, banners is where I'm going to be. Okay. We used to do fence, no more. Yeah, I had to see that. No more fence. I like, I like the kids down there stomping all the... Uh, no. Yeah, that, that's a good job. He's going to have a sore leg in the morning. There you go. Yes, he is. <laughs> so, can you do O'Reilly? So up the, they're up here, you know, dragging these barriers around. You know, they they just I think they just unhooked the strap that they had on the back of the UTV that was pulling them. So you know, they're trying to get this all into position. This is the corner here after two two-block long straightaways. Believe me, there's a lot of action on this corner. People camp out on this corner for the whole weekend because there is a lot of crashes on this corner. It's carrying a lot of speed, you know, some, like I said, some of those carts are running 80 mile an hour up here. And they gotta get around this corner to head down that, that one block straightaway right there. Yeah, you can see how they narrowed up the street a little bit. This is pretty close to what it's gonna be. Yeah, yeah. They put the gray jersey barrier back towards the curbing, and then the, the red and white chain, chain barriers, those, those will go a little bit clo closer to the actual race racetrack mm -hmm. itself but you know they're like everybody else you know safety first yep. Yep. so yep. they they know you they know where you're going to have the accidents at for the most part you know so they're trying to get a double safety barrier here before you get to the fence uh unlike some some events you're going to go to that are street races you don't have all of this and they'll have six to eight corner workers down here right they'll have six to eight corner workers on each corner to pull the carts to safety, pull the drivers to safety. Uh, just a lot of action. Here comes our, our buddy truck driver again. A lot of crowd watches over here because a lot of days it's pretty hot down here in Rock Island. So they get a little shade underneath this bus stop area. You know, on Sunday they get four or five thousand people come down here and watch this. Now they got the safety strap hooked up over here, so they got to they got to pull those barriers up where they're supposed to be. So here we go. Pull that length of barriers up. That toe strap hooked up there. put together. The ambulance going to help somebody. So there you go.
All kinds of fencing to be moved yet. Got a few locals hanging out here watching the action going on. So we've covered that off the two blocks straight away. We just covered the one block. Now we're down here to this fast left-hander. You're turn, carrying... Turn number three. Turn number three to be exact. So you're carrying a lot of speed through here. Uh, those barriers right there will get pushed back. But uh, this is not necessarily real wide. And when they finish setting this, I've seen people knock the left front wheel off their cart and the spindle off their cart because they cut that too close. Yep. It's not too hard to do. And it's pretty easy to push wide here and get into the barriers off to the side. Yep, a lot of people crash right straight down here ahead of us. Uh, the, other, the other tricky part about this is you're covering so much momentum and you're going to be coming up on the only right-hander in the course. So everybody's coming through the course this way going across the street that way and cutting back to go around the right hander so you might think you're gonna get by somebody like right in here but guess what he just went right across your nose and uh, we've had it happen it's kind of hard to pass on this block a lot of times you catch people here but it's hard to pass them here just because you're moving so far right to left, back to right. So as you can see, a lot of work to do on this corner yet. Other than a little fencing, nothing's been done other than stuff's dropped off here and kind of linked together. So you're really hauling the mail down through here when you hook around this. You gotta remember these things are here. That one's right there. I uh, got a nice low spot right there. Uh, that's, that's a pretty good drop in right there. If you hit that, uh, that's going to be a little unsettling on your cart. But it's the way it is. My least favorite corner of the course. Saturday Night Fever now playing. Sean swears there's always somebody sitting up on top of that when he comes around here. Uh, some year they should at least put a dummy up there, a mannequin. They should. Yeah, it could be, you know, it could be a little spooky up there, you know. Yep. So, you know, you want to put a mannequin up there for Saturday and Sunday, that'd be fine. We'd go along with that. We should spook a couple people out. <laughs> yeah. Run down this straightaway here. into turn five in between these big tall streets the vintage two strokes really do a nice echo job down through here unfortunately I'm usually sitting in one of them and I can't get back here to videotape this we're just like we're just like Rock Island Grand Prix we don't have enough help because it takes everybody either to drive the carts or start the carts and then there's nobody to run the video camera back here in these back streets. Yeah, we need about three or four cameras. Yeah, I need three or four cameras to catch it all. Yep, there it is. This corner always gets you too because it's got a lot of manhole covers, a lot of valve boxes in here. Yep, um, it's going to be a very unsettling corner. If you hit things just right, it pushes you right to the wall and you're you're carrying all that momentum right to the wall anyways. I always have a big uh, hangout crowd here. Usually there's food stand there. I don't know if they're having it there this year or not. Maybe it'll show up tomorrow. Um, they were talking about they were having a little bit of problem with finding volunteers to run run the food little food drink. stands around the around the course but They do have a crosswalk here when the races aren't running. They have people that stand here and, and they, you can come to the inside and you can get to the couple of the eating venues that are on the inside of the course. So 
So you're running down through here at a really good pace, coming down here to turn six, and the barriers you see ahead of us, that is the exit off of the track. And guess what that does? That makes that corner narrower. You know, it's one thing they did different down here, is they've taken the lights down, the stoplights. Yeah. And that's always kind of unsettling, too, when you run down this course. You can see the stoplights all over the place. Stop. Yeah, usually they got stoplights up here, and stoplights are flashing red, you know, and you run right through the stoplights. That's the one time you get to run all the stoplights in town. Yeah, it looks like they took that down and put up this uh, regular old stop sign. So there's been a lot of buildings that are closed down here, so I'm guessing they probably don't have as many traffic, as much traffic anymore. Um, unfortunately, this is this area is really suffering economically. Yeah, I think the internet, online shopping and everything has taken away from being able to operate a store any place anymore. Uh, these communities do not know what to do with all these buildings and, and everything. It costs so much to renovate them. Even if you try to turn them into apartments, you're going to be years trying to get your money back. Yeah, I like the Argus building there is uh, completely empty. Yep, four lease. Argus is gone. So yeah, we're down here by the starting grid. A lot of action happens down on this corner all the time. You know, you come around here and there's going to be people that are going to lose it right there. So, fun and games. Well, there you are. There's a walk around to the Rock Island Vintage. There's the uh, famous Cameron Stock right there. Yeah. Look at that guy. Look, look, look at who we got here. How are you? He's yeah, he's famous. That's now right. he is. I try not to be. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's, Joe's running away from us. He's got all the pizzas, man, and he isn't going to give us any. Hey, you're going to be slow tomorrow. Too much pizza. <laughs>